Hi, I'm Christine and I'm on a mission to start a hummingbird garden here on my farm. Come with me as I take some steps to both kill some grass, prepare the space, and pick the perfect plants. One of my favorite places on this farm is the gathering place. This right here is a deck and we actually built it to be a little dance floor because we had a hoe down here last fall. Right behind that is a big tractor shed that we've converted into a gathering place and it's got picnic tables and swivel chairs. What I'm doing is I'm gonna landscape all around this and it's gonna be turned into an educational area because we have farm camp out here and I want all of our kids to learn about hummingbirds this summer. The goal for this area is to plant the most perfect, most delicious nectar sources for hummingbirds so that even if we are right here enjoying barbecue or having farm camp, the hummingbirds will come right up to us and we get to observe them face to face. Now I've chosen the easy way to garden by letting the sun do all the work to kill this grass. There's a lot of other ways that you can remove grass, but I've got a little time on my hands because it's still too early to plant some things that don't like cold weather. So in a couple of weeks, this will be dead and I can dig some holes and start planting all the yummy things. So phase one is in action now. Phase two will be planting and we'll talk about the plants that I chose then. If you don't have greenhouse plastic, you could use cardboard. You could also use landscape fabric and you can staple them down with these long landscape staples. So let's do that now to all this greenhouse plastic I've got. It can be a little bit hard to visualize where to put things and how big they're gonna get and are they gonna be crammed or is there gonna be too much space in between. So I have a little program on my iPad Pro that's gonna help me do this. From this to this. It's planting day and it's a little bit sooner than I originally intended. The grass is not completely killed back yet. So I'm gonna have to attack it by another method with cardboard. But today is planting day. I have all of my goodies stashed in here. And so let's talk about what I'm gonna put here. At our previous home, I had a hibiscus that was the jewel of my garden. So I want another one. I went back to my most beloved place, Creekside Nursery, and I got the Spinderella. My last hibiscus was Perfect Storm, and this is a close match to it. So because this is the jewel of my garden, I want it to be somewhere where I can see it from my front porch, which is right in front of me. So I think it's gonna go right here. Now I know what you're thinking, look at how tiny, why am I giving it so much space right here in the corner? And the reason is, is because I want it to grow to its full size without having to crowd any other plants around it. As the jewel of a garden, I want it to stand alone and not be in a crowded space. So it's gonna go right here and I'm gonna allow for a lot of growth around it because they get big and wide. The next thing I'm putting in on the opposite side of the porch are gonna be the quick fire fab hydrangeas. These things get six to eight feet tall and wide. They are enormous. I love hydrangeas. Lime lights might be my favorite hydrangea, but for the hummingbirds, I am going to pull in a lot of color. Now, I don't normally see hummingbirds going to hydrangeas, but that's okay. What I'm doing is bringing their attention to this space with all the color that the Quick Fire Fab is gonna give us. And so, by bringing them in with a ton of flower power, they're gonna find their nectar sources and some other plants that are nearby. Let me go place these. <sighs> Here's another plant that I have going in, the Grand Cascade Butterfly Bush. I had these at my old house before we moved and their blooms are no joke the size of my arm. I took a picture of a blossom one time, it was the size of my arm. Yes, they are a butterfly bush, but the hummingbirds love it. I think it is a very good nectar source for them. So I've got three of these going right here in the front. I bought these a while back and I left them outside and they got bit by a frost. They're bouncing right back. If you ever see stuff that looks like this, but you see new leafy growth, you're gonna be just fine. I've got some evergreen shrubs that I want to add to this area for two reasons. The first reason is this structure gives a hummingbird somewhere to sit and kind of keep watch. Male hummingbirds are a little bit territorial, not a little bit, they are very territorial and they like to find a high perch somewhere bushy, branchy that has some sort of shade element to it so that they can watch and guard over their nectar source. In fact, if you watch long enough and they find their perfect little perch, you can see them zoom off and chase off other male hummingbirds. <laughs> And I'm adding this Hetz Midget only because I like the contrast of green that it gives the sunshine, the gushrooms right there. It's also an evergreen feature, so when I'm looking at it from my front porch, it's not all sticks in the winter. 
So I've got the garden bones laid out. It's time for me to start digging. It's gonna get real sweaty here soon. But what I have here is, is I like the structure of it. I like the color of it. Starting with your really big plants first makes it super easy. Then later on, I'm gonna be adding in my herbaceous perennials like uh, kufia and salvia. These are amazing nectar sources for them. The shape of the flower makes it almost an exclusive hummingbird flower. So those are gonna go in next, but for right now, it's time to get sweaty. If there's one thing that I've learned about hibiscus, it's that if they don't overwinter, if they don't come back the next spring, it's most likely because their roots rotted. The winters in North Carolina can be extremely wet. So to combat that, because we are on a slope and I do feel like water would settle here, I planted the root ball just a little bit high to avoid that problem. If you're wondering what my plan is for the grass, it's not to leave it. That would just be so chaotic. It is to put cardboard all around and let the no sunlight thing just do its thing. If you'll notice, those butterfly bushes didn't get any fertilizer. And the reason is because they really thrive on neglect. Unlike me, if your soil is too nutrient rich and if you water it too much, they really tend to perish. In fact, I have a butterfly bush growing out of a brick retaining wall near my driveway. I'll show it to you. I mean, who wants to be beautiful and delicate like a rose when you can be obnoxiously resilient like a butterfly bush? <laughs> What? I don't think anybody's ever died from a lemonade deficiency, but I, ju I just might be the first one. Don't laugh. I almost came to an unnatural end. I'm going to sit in the shade to take a break. And I have been joined by all my friends. Come into the shade. You're so gentle. So beautiful. Johnny Paul. You come in for some smokes? I'll eat my gloves. Grubs that love a ton of water, like these hydrangeas, filling up the hole before you plant them in can really help their roots have a lot of access to a very saturated ground. Oh, mommy, are you planting more? I am. I'm trying to edge out this garden bed as well. That is so smart. Oh, I wish I could take credit for it. It's not my idea, but I am going to use it. Whose idea is it? You know, I saw this idea a long time ago on Pinterest. And I think it's kind of become what most people use to design their garden now. Mommy, this deck is going to be so beautiful. What's the purpose? I've used my hose to give myself like a shape that I want to follow, and that gives me a visual of where I want the border between grass and our mulch to go. I'm not married to this idea, but I'm gonna go ahead and start and then take a, take a step back and then look at it as a whole. Another day has passed and this has gradually evolved. I'm adding in my aqua pot here with a salvia in the center and a geranium. The geranium for the color, salvia for the nectar, and I found some knockout roses that I absolutely fell in love with. I'm gonna get these planted and we're gonna start adding cardboard because that's gonna kill down the grass and we're gonna be, be putting mulch on top of that. I've got a few more things to do here, but the first layer of mulch is in. Definitely got a little bit more work to do, but it feels good to get those 20 bags of mulch laid out.
Okay, so we finally have laid a little bit more cardboard. I need like five more bags and this will finally be, did I say cardboard? Yeah, <laughs> Here we are in June and I'm finally wrapping up this project. If you've made it this far in the video, I applaud you because it's been a long one, but I love hummingbirds and I love plants and I love to explain the process of how I'm getting my hummingbirds to come right up to me in the place where I'm sitting so that I can enjoy them really close up. So let me give you a little tour. I laid the last bit of mulch that we had, but I didn't have enough. I always underestimate how much mulch it's gonna take because <laughs> It ended up being a bigger garden than I thought it was gonna be because my eyes are bigger than my wallet But anyway, I digress. Let me show you all the beautiful things. It's really starting to fill in since you know, I started filming in March So wow, this has really come a long way. So here I have some kufia. Kufia is my go-to plant This was introduced to me at Creekside Nursery This is we call it the hummingbird plant because it is almost exclusively for the hummingbirds This trumpet shape just makes it um, irresistible to hummingbirds. It's really fit for their mouth. Great nectar source and it's bright orange slash red. Hummingbirds can see in the ultraviolet color spectrum. It's a different spectrum than what we can see in. So um, I'm always going to go for the brightly colored flowers when it comes to trying to draw in hummingbirds. What I have right behind it is an Angelonia. This bright purple. It's one of their favorite colors. I see them coming to it all the time. So putting them together, making a nice full pot. Um, I love it. I adore it. The hummingbirds are always right here at this pot. Come with me, I wanna show you some of the shrubs that I have in here that kind of make up the bones of the garden. So right here, I have Grand Cascade. There are three of them. These things get six feet tall and wide. They are absolutely enormous. So they are surrounded by blank space right now, only because I know that if I try to put anything close to it, I'm gonna be moving it in a year because of how big they get. Also, if you're wondering, I'm holding this in my hands because I forgot to plant it. And if I don't hold this, I'm gonna forget again. This is um, <laughs> this is a nepeta called cat's pajamas. It's one of my, if not my favorite plant, it's at least top three. It smells amazing. It's one of the earliest things to bloom in the garden. And um, although I don't see hummingbirds coming to it, it serves a very important part of this garden because it's a strong smell as a deer returnant. Deer deterrent. <laughs> Repellent. Deer, det it deters the deers. Shut up. I have in this garden a couple of things that the deer really love. Deer love roses. Deer love azaleas. I don't love the deer loving my roses and azaleas. So I'm going to plant some strong smelling things. I have a few more things over there. I'm going to dot these in between my roses and hopefully that serves as a way to keep the deer out of here. So come with me. Here I have a coral colored uh, landscape rose. These roses open like a dark coral colored and then they mature to a light pink. It's very pretty. There's like a spectrum of pinks and corals on it as the roses mature. And then right here, this is kind of an important one. It's small now because it's a baby, but this is an azalea. It's one of the earliest things to bloom. And because this is an encore azalea, it's going to bloom three times during this growing season. So, um, what I really love to do is give hummingbirds a source of nectar in all three of the seasons that they are here for. So um, they arrive back to North Carolina around April 1st and the vermilionaire and the angelonia are not going to survive the temperatures. Even though it's not like freezing cold, we could have a snap until April 19th. But one thing that will survive and still produce blooms very, very early is this azalea. So I love peppering in my early spring bloomers. Um, just for them when they first return to North Carolina. It's like a welcome home party. Here is another rose and then here we have another Grand Cascade and then I've got a couple of vining plants that are going to come and climb up the railings. What are they called? It's like so hot outside I can't think straight. They're called this because I'm going to remember while I'm editing. Come over here. Another strong smelling plant is lavender. I've had this thing for three years now. It is still going strong. If you are like me and you live in North Carolina where we garden in heavy clay, lavender has been really hard to grow just because it doesn't love clay. So my best success I've had is growing it in pots. And then right next to it, I've got rosemary, another strong smelling plant. So I've got a whole bunch of deer deterrents right here because my neighbors called this section up here deer alley and this is where they love to come down the road and just come this away so i'm trying to put all my strong smelling stuff in this area over here so they're like gross and move on now look how much the hibiscus has grown since i first planted it a little spinderella when i planted it it had just a few leaves on it and it's already grown so big we can expect to see some blooms very very soon 
I've got another aqua pot up here, and this is filled with a salvia. The main event right here is the salvia. Salvias can be annuals or perennials based on what kind you get, and this is one of their favorites. I see them at this. It's also a trumpet-shaped bloom. They love it over here. Inside this pot, I planted some seeds. This is alyssum, and it smells incredibly strong. So this is another deer deterrent right here with this alyssum, and I've got some vinca in here and a dusty miller. I think that's what that is. Another strong smelling plant for you is marigold. I don't see the hummingbirds coming to this a lot, um, but I know that it is a strong smeller. And then right here is a bee balm. It's not in bloom right now. It's kind of coming back from a little bit of underwatering. And then right here, I have a very strong smelling pineapple sage. This also puts on huge red blooms in late fall. So it is a dual purpose plant for me. It is going to give the hummingbirds some nectar come fall. And then it also is gonna keep the deer away because it has a very strong fragrance. And then of course, I've just got a few little uh, plants in here that are going to give this garden some winter interest. So I've got an orb right here. This is a het smidget, as well as two sunshine ligustrums. And then coming on up here, a black eyed Susan. I just love that it is so tiny, but it's already producing a bloom. It is so gorgeous. I grew this from a seed this winter and then planted it in here. It went through a little transplant shock and then bounced right back. Now, this is another plant. This is a raging Cajun and it's not in all of its uh, full beauty right now because it's still a baby, but this is a Ruella and it produces a red trumpet shaped flower. Hummingbirds love it when it's in full bloom. So we'll give that some time to mature and then we'll come back and we'll do another little tour when everything is all finished up. All right, one last thing is a water source. Hummingbirds love to play in the water. I noticed this for the first time when I had a sprinkler running in our old yard and it was like this frog on a copper thing and it spins and the hummingbirds would dive in and out of it. So to bring a little bit of a water element, I have this old uh, bird bath here and I'm gonna get a little um, solar powered bubbler off of Amazon. They're like $12, super cheap. So I'm gonna level out a piece of ground right here and um, fill this up with water. So they're gonna have a water source, they're gonna have nectar source, they have all these trees and perch posts that they can perch on. And that is how we're bringing hummingbirds right up and up close and personal to us. That is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. Put your questions or comments or suggestions below. I love new hummingbird ideas. And that's all, bye y'all.